is there some this is the build OGM call for Tuesday, October 26, 2021. Um, high level. There's something about when um, when somebody when I'm in the flow that I could explain my thoughts better. So when I'm in a hangout with somebody. Right. So yeah. That makes total sense to me. Yeah. So anyway, so I'm looking at least to start with for those like to support people that think, you know what, I would like to help frame a lecture around and specifically it would be starting with what I said about the medical in industry using that hysteria example, because that's what I didn't get a chance to share with you and I mm -hmm. wish I knew how to share screen better. Um, it's relatively simple to do you want me to talk you through it. I know how to share screen, but what happens is when I share screen, I can no longer see you. Um, you can also change the gallery. Um, let me exit full you should screen. Be able, you should be able to still see me because I get thumbnails of everybody who's still in the room. Okay, so I can, right now I can't see you, but that's okay because I want to go to my docs. And I want to go, I think this is where I put the hysteria notes. No, here's where I put my hysteria notes. Okay. So I can't see you, but I just threw these notes here so I could go back, but mm -hmm. get this, the symptoms of hysteria, a fondness of writing. What? <laughs> can you see my screen? Oh, I didn't, can you see my screen? No, no, I can't. no, you're not, you're not sharing yet. Oh, I didn't share yet. All right, so let me yeah, go you back. actually click the share button. Right, so let me see if I can find you, because I got to find the share button. Okay, share screen. Yeah, okay. there we go, boom. Yay. And I can see you. Okay. Now, yeah, I should still be there in a little thumbnail. Yes, I, yes, you are. So I just, and again, it was even difficult for me to figure out how do I get this written stuff over to this page so I have it later. Because mm -hmm. the way I used to work is I, I, I would go to the library, I'd have all my books, I'd make photocopies of everything, I'd highlight everything. In my head, I knew where everything was. Right. On the computer, I can't. I can't do that because I don't work. I need to physically, you know, I'm a post-it notes kind of person. But anyway, so here's this thing. So look at this. A fondness of writing is one of the symptoms. Um, what was, so, so Hippocrates and Plato spoke of the womb, which they said tended to wander around the female body, causing right. an array of physical and mental conditions. So my thought was, because we have this whole fragility thing and this, you know, um, this whole idea of people can't take criticism. Well, Plato and Hippocrates, I don't, <laughs> I don't think they're going to mind. Maybe it will be acceptable if we, instead of like mocking them, just gently point out <laughs> where people in the past may have been off. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, exactly. Now, it doesn't say so here, but you do know that the Greek, uh, so uh hysteria comes from esteros which is the uterus so there's a direct connection to the to the it's it's written here as the womb which doesn't look like it's similar but but uh, but esteros is the womb so hysteria used to be thought of as the womb going crazy or something like that so the word the word is directly connected to it sure and but get this while Rowan noted that both men and women could contract hysteria women were according to him more predisposed to this ailment because of their lazy and irritable nature he was having a bad marriage <laughs> so anyway i'm going to unshare the screen because i think you get oh, my well, point. hold on oh, so you, you haven't you haven't titled this document yet so i'm seeing up on the upper left it says untitled document your yes. life will be easier if you click on where it says untitled document and name it um you know description of hysteria or something like that uh it, replace that just start typing yeah well actually actually i actually i this for me this system of using the first line actually um, works for me <laughs> okay uh, that makes a messy makes for messy google drive but that's just fine um, okay i, I cool. see what you're saying all right yeah, but yeah. I, and i'll change it because again these are for me these are like the scraps that i was telling you about yeah yeah so when i'm fine but i think when i do it i'm gonna have to just write it by hand but because your scraps will be easier to find if they're titled. And then when you go back and look at your Google Drive, because I'm, uh, yeah. Well, let me title it. Um, uh, so that's that's a fine that. title, or you could just go, just go click on the title again. 
uh, and it should highlight the whole. Now just con uh, command A will highlight the whole line. I don't know. Give me another command A. I don't even are you know. On, how to... Are you on Windows or a Mac? I just I just backspace usually. <laughs> are you on Windows or a Mac? You need shortcuts. Windows. Windows. Okay, so it's Control A. I think whatever whatever the command key is. Uh, hold down the command key and hit the A. There you go. See, it highlighted the whole line. Okay. That that command A does all. Um, and you know about copy paste, right? Uh, command That's X. That's the command only B. thing I know. Okay. So there's a lot more of those shortcuts. Now oh, wait a minute. An... I don't know. I don't know what you said. I do. I do. Control C. Control V. Those are fine. Do you know about Control Z? Does that bring back stuff that you lost? Control Z is the undo key. It stops, it, it, it undoes the last thing you did and it keeps going. Yeah. So Control Z, very, very, very important. So now give it an, uh, while you're in the field, give it a new title. Yeah. And then hit return, you're good. And now when you go to your Google Drive, you will find all your little nuggets with nice names. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Um, okay, so I'm going to stop yeah. share. Sounds great. Um, so what's stopping you from just going ahead and starting doing something like this? Nothing stopping me. It just all came together. You yeah. know, I always have so many different things and now it just all came together. The one topic that could pull in all the other things I want to be able to do. Mm -hmm. One of the things I want to be able to do is work in a team. Right. That's what I like. You know, even even if it's paid company, that's how I work well. Right, makes sense. So, um, so you could practice. You could sort of set that up and invite a couple of people and do a practice run anytime you feel like it. Well, that's why my first step, which is what I just did before I came here, was to, to go put it on Trove. Trove. Yep. Put it in, at least there. I'll have my private group where I could, you know, just invite them in. Cool. Those are and so it wanted you to log back in. Did you manage to make it stick on Trove or what happened? I don't know because it was time to come to the call. Oh, that's funny. Okay. So you were just doing that. Yes. So anyway, cool. how can I listen to you now? Because I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I, I was going to, I was going to uh, sit and ask about the structure of the tiles in the mosaic, but that's the geekier part of what the, what this project is. That was the, the part of build OGM I was interested in right this minute. Um, but there's a bunch of other sort of stuff that, that needs to happen. And maybe, maybe I can ask you um, what moving parts need to be made to work better in order to be better build OGM. Like what, what, what sort of stuff should I be paying more attention to? Because I'm, I'm a little scattered. I'm, I'm busy trying. I've got two big projects that are happening right now, two, comp two events basically. Um, and they're just draining a whole bunch of time from, from these weeks. Um, one of them will be over this Sunday, so it'll be completely done. The other one's going to go on for another month, I think. Uh, <clears throat> and so I'm also trying to start the podcast, which November 1 is coming up very quickly. And I'd like to do like six episodes of a podcast in November, which I think means three episodes of a podcast and then three shadow episodes in which we're busy sort of mulling over what happened, weaving it better, asking questions, making connections, that kind of thing. Um, and Mila gave me good advice, which was like, just, just, just do the simplest thing that could possibly work. Go get started. Uh, go do it. So that's good. Um, but I'm trying to figure out which other, move, which other moving parts. For the podcast? Uh, for, well, no, for how it fits into the rest of what we're doing. I think, I think that question. I'm wondering how many other people have that desire to do podcasts and if there can be like some discussion around how you, you know, how you can like help each other in the same way I'm talking about. It's almost like that, you know, company kind of thing, like you're each doing your own thing, but so this is, Again, this is kind of abstract where I'm pulling it from. I was I had been looking at um, job openings. It's something had just caught my eye. It was really interesting. It was a social media thing, and you needed to be able to work Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That was their main thing. 
And I was thinking, it would be so great if they would just hire a team. You had your Facebooks working just, you know, the person that really knows Facebook really well does that. And the person that really knows Twitter, you know, and the, then those three people, they kind of work together and they help each other to do, even though they're doing their own thing. And that's what I'd like to see more of. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, so earlier when we were first thinking about weaving the world and all that, I was talking about correspondence and so forth. And I was also talking about how it would be great if there were multiple podcasts that were all feeding the big fungus kind of thing. Um, so what you just described would, would easily be either, right? Yes, exactly. And I have to say, so the, okay, so I'll go back to what I was writing in Trope because that right. caused me to have to, you know, I had to tag certain things. Yep. So when I think of people that I go to for support, two main groups would come to mind. One obviously would be OGM. The other would be GCC. So for example, Sam and I, we actually had a hangout, which again helps me. There are a lot of different, I, I don't know that they're necessarily a podcast. You call it what, you know, whatever it is, some media artifact that I think he and I would have interest in. And I've really, I've really wanted to bring him in and actually, I want to ask you, are you, friend, are you friends with Doug Breitbart? Um, I've, we've met, yes. I've really wanted to invite him into one of these smaller calls that deals with media. As a matter of fact, on a Sunday call, they got a little bit into technology, which I turned off my screen and did what I needed to do. But I thought that it would have been, it would have, he would have fit right into like a free Jerry's brain call. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've not I've not heard from him or talked to him in a really long time, but he's a brain fan and he has a startup called Symbol and Symbol is the semantic web app. It's like, ooh, okay. That's funny. That's and I, as well as I know him, that's one thing I didn't know about him. No, <laughs> and I know a lot about him. That's interesting. Let me let me open his LinkedIn profile because it could be the Symbol came and went because that's what I've got in my brain. And I added Symbol to my brain in, let me just click. I added symbol to my brain in 2012. So the likelihood that it's still around is actually low. Um, and see what it says. Co-founder at Being in Systems now. Yes, he's working. Yes, that I know. About. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know Being in Systems. So I guess the point I'm trying that what I, so for me, those two groups encompass anyone I would ever go to. Mm -hmm. for expertise, for help. I mean, and like I could imagine if Doug and Sam were doing something, I could imagine that that would um, catalyze Sam and Pete to work together. Right. Like, and again, I'm just imagining, I can't tell anybody who to work with or what to do, but well, Pete gave me the term futurist. And in many ways, I am a futurist. And I can imagine that it would work well. Um, so I'm wondering if as you're doing Weaving the World, we might want to, as a commons project, bring in a second kind of parallel reporting, whatever it may be. Um, you know, um, and there's a few ideas. Like I know Allison Melissa is really interested in creating uh, discussions and podcasts that focus on uh, economic trauma mm -hmm. and a whole economic system. And my last, um, I haven't spoken to her about it, but she had sent me something, I had sent it to her back. What I said for me, my part to plug in, I'm interested in that before before that series happens, I'm interested in taking out the word trauma. I mean, taking out the word economic trauma, mm -hmm. just talking about trauma, but looking at it through the lens of, get this, so looking at it through the, looking at it, looking at capitalism, but instead of the currency being money, the, the currency is attention. Now look at those same things using economic terms like, mm -hmm. um, cost-benefit analysis, because my 
hypothesis or contention or whatever, is that the white males, they're not necessarily suffering from economic trauma. They're suffering from a different kind of trauma. And if, and again, I'm going to say you guys, but if you guys mm -hmm. can't, you know, so the men that I spend time with usually have done inner work. So they recognize more than most men. Right. However, like all of us, we still have further to go. So I'm interested in what I call like that more kindergarten or that beginner's conversation about trauma. Mm -hmm. And I think that the attention economy is a good way to frame that. I personally think that for a lot of emotional reasons, I think that that might provide the separation necessary to be able to have productive conversations without too many triggers going off. Uh -huh. um, so you know that there's been a book and there's a whole movement about the attention economy? No, <laughs> I've heard the term, but I've never, oh, I only sure. know how I've made sense of it in my own mind of what it could mean. Let me screen share for a second and uh, show you. So here's the notion of the attention economy. Uh, Michael Goldhaber is kind of the one credited with, um, I think, kind of putting this on the map. Uh, where's the book? Here we go. Go back to articles about, here's the book, The Attention Economy, Understanding the New Currency of Business, written by John Beck. Didn't realize that it wasn't gold. I thought it was Goldhaber who had written this article, but not. Anyway, there's um, uh, six types of attention. Uh, you know, of course, because it's a Harvard Business School kind of book, it's, it needs to have these kinds of things. I guess I didn't put a, put all the different six. Oh, here, aversion or attraction, captive or voluntary, front of mind or back of mind. That's the framework that they came up with. Um, and I'll send you a link to this thought right here, so you can wander around uh, the attention economy stuff. Well, uh, so here, Jerry. Yeah. So here's what's really most important to me and what I want to get to. Do people that are in technology recognize how they are, I'm going to use this, how they are raping the public in the same way that we've raped the planet? That's what I'm trying to get at. Do they, I, I think, they the, I think the critics of the system are very clearly aware of that. The people who are embedded in the system and have created the system some of them are awake and are like, mm, guess we got to do this because it makes us a lot of money. And some of them are oblivious to it. So correct. Now, now, so you see here, the new scarcity is attention yuck. So I'm a critic of the attention economy thesis. Uh, here's, here's actually, I think, one of the, the fundamental papers. Um, but for me, the attention economy says scarcity equals value. Your time is scarce. Therefore, we should all be competing for your time. And, and I just really have never liked, uh, never liked that at all. Um, wow, this goes way back, doesn't it? Let me just look. Uh, 2000, so I added this thought in the year 2000, which is 21 years ago, oh well. Um, and you're looking at attention, I think, in a different way than what is normally meant in the attention economy, which is interesting. Yes, and but that's exactly why I want to use that language. Well, what I'm saying is the language is entangled with all this stuff and, and no, with a slightly different meaning from what you're meaning. Maybe um, yes and maybe no, because I know you don't like that it's saying that your time is scarce, but isn't that how most people feel? Um, yeah, except to me, that's not the variable that matters. Uh, these be so the fans of this model are saying that, that that this is this is the major thing that matters and this is the thing we should kind of measure and try to worry about um and i'm like you know i have friends who i haven't seen in a decade if they showed up tomorrow they, they're occupying none of my attention right now if they showed up tomorrow and said jerry i've got something urgent can you help me i would drop things and go help them immediately they have That's all of my they have all of my trust and zero of my attention right now but you just said what you said it it's all about trust bingo which is why I talk about the design from trust, the relationship economy, and a bunch of other stuff in objection to the experience economy and the attention economy. Okay, so, so those, those, those two models got really popular back in the 90s and uh, 2000s. And I'm like, no, we don't want to turn, like, the, the experience economy is Pine and Gilmore, and it's like, um, let's you know, turn everything into Disney, and the attention economy is, is this other thing. 
Okay. So, so as in everything else, I'm all about finding that one little thing that we could tweak that would make it good. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. I've got to switch locations, but uh, sure. hold everything. Um, and let me just hit the backgroundy thing. Blah, 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 blah. There we go. Come on, little machine. Huh. There we go. Can do you mind if we stop recording for a minute? Not at all. Or, or for forever. Let me <laughs> let me settle back down. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you just said so. There should be. Huh. Hold on. Hold on one second. I needed to help with lighting. Take your time. <laughs> be right with you. Do 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 do. Hang on.